What's going on? Welcome back. In today's video, we are doing OSINT case study. If you don't know what is OSINT, I encourage you to stop the video and research more on Google to find out what is OSINT. OSINT is, uh, stands for Open Source Intelligence. So if you don't know what is OSINT, stop the video and go research more about OSINT. So the case study today is all around finding the personal information of a user who created Rodolph. Rodolph is the name of the challenge which we are undertaking today. It is taken from Try Hack Me. And um, as you can see, we are required to answer some questions about the person who created the Rodolph. Okay. Now, if we get back to see what are the initials we are given, and then we will take advantage of the information we are given to find out more about the person. Uh, so, as you can see here, we are given a Reddit account. Now, the username, we have the username. From the username, we will find the birth city. And we will find also the full name. The full name will be found by just doing some Google search. Now, other, peaceful, other useful information, such as the coordinates and the hometown, will be found by locating a Twitter account. And from the Twitter account, we will find that there are coordinates and hometown related to the person. So at the end, at the end, we paint a picture about the person just by knowing the birth date, the full name, the hometown, and the coordinates uh, of the location which they stay in. All right. So let's get started. And as you can see here, we have the Reddit account of the user. So that's what we're given here. We're doing Reddit account. If we go to the posts, there is nothing. If we go to comments. We see a couple of comments, which, which means it is worth taking a look at these comments to find out if we can grab some useful information. So if you look at the comment number two, the commenter, which is the uh, Reddit account creator, saying, fun fact, I was actually born in Chicago, and my creator's name was Robert. So from this comment, we can find that the birth city is Chicago. And the creator name of the Rodolf, which is the name of this challenge, is Robert. All right. So which marks the answer for the first question? So the first question is saying, what URL will take me directly to Rodolf's Reddit comment history? So technically, this is the URL. All the next one, according to Rodolf, where was he born? So we found this, actually. He was born in Chicago. Okay, the third question, Rodolf mentions Robert. Can you use Google to tell me Robert's last name? All right, so here, if we get back to the Reddit account, we see the creator mentions something about Robert. All right, and this one will take us directly to, the, to finding out the full name of the creator. Okay, so how do we find this? If we go to Google now, and we type Robert, and then the name of the challenge. Or if we type Rodolf creator. So we see here Robert L. May. This guy is the guy that was mentioned in this comment. So the comment is saying my creator my creator's name was Robert. So it's, it's saying it's Avis saying that Robert has created the Reddit account. So in order to find out, and the Reddit account is called Rodolph. So in order to find out the full name, we have just to use meaningful keywords. Rodolph is the name of the account or the challenge, and put here creator. We found out the person that has the first name as Robert and the last name as Elmay. So if we answer with this one, Rodolf mentions Robert. Can you use Google to tell me about the last name? The last name is May. So we answer with that. So, so far we have found, so far we found the birth city 
and the full name by utilizing the Reddit account and Google search. Okay. Now let's go back to the Reddit account and see if we have something else to find. So going through the last comments here, there's nothing meaningful. But the first one, ouch, some days I love Twitter, some days it's just lol. So it means that the creator of this account has another account on Twitter. But what's the username? So actually, if we try with this username, let's take this one and open Twitter. Okay, we answer, we put the, in the search, we put the username that we got from the Reddit and we find two matches. If you click on the first one, so we see an account that has a couple of pictures. So we don't know, we don't know yet if this is the correct account, but if we browse to the second account, we see there is no activity. We see one tweet. I love criminal minds. Most probably this is not the account we are intended to open. So we're going to put that again and open that account. So this is the account. Let's see here. On what other social media platform? So we type Twitter. That's correct. Now, what is Rudolph's username on that platform? Now, as you can see, we have found the username by just, it was by coincidence that we take or we took the, we took the username on Reddit and we found a match on uh, Twitter. All right. But sometimes, the name doesn't match okay so we have to find out using a more systematic way so if you're given a username such as the one we found in reddit we can find out more what about what are what are the social media platforms that have this exact username or this exact name as a username so we go to a website called name checkup So here we take the username that we're given and put the name here, search. Let's put this here. Okay. So we see here what are the, um, let's click on search one more time. So going over the results, the first table is for domain names, not for us. The second table is usernames. So we see here the potential usernames. Or potential platforms that have this account as a username or this user as a username. We see Twitter, we see Fever, Webwork. But actually, if you click here, I couldn't find anything. So that's why you can check here and just take the username and search in Twitter to find out that there is an actual account that matches this name. So going back to Triac Me to answer the question, what is Rudolph username on that platform? So Going back, that's the username. Nope. This one. Okay. So one of the OSINT techniques is going over the post history. Going over the post history reveals much too much information that could identify the person. So if we go to the oldest post, I like to search from the oldest to the newest. So the oldest post is oldest tweet, always thinking about my creator. Here we have retweets. Okay, this one's saying, taking a little vacation this year, feeling cute, might turn into a parade, balloon later. I don't know. Okay. Day and night, it got a little cold, so I put a scarf on. All right. 
So as you can see these pictures, let's save these pictures to the local computer. Maybe they will reveal something. Okay. Love me some bachelorette, but Ed Kamal. So this is the name of a TV show actually. If we Google this. It's a TV show, The Bachelorette, yes. So that's the name of a TV show that the person likes. You can, it's worth taking a note of that. Right eye south of my hotel to, here is a high resolution of one, here is a high resolution to one of the photos from earlier. Let's click on that. So here is another photo that we can save. more where is Yao Yo Marriott is where Rudolph loves to lay his head okay so that's it so we got some photos and we got the birth uh, we got the uh, favorite show so if we go back to try hack me here see the question what appears to be Rudolph's favorite TV show right now so it is the bachelorette Okay, based on Rudolph's post history, he took part in a parade. Where did the parade take place? All right. So if you remember, we got some photos here. Let's take these photos and paste them here. Okay. So we have photos of a parade, right? We have to find out where did these photos or where have these photos where have these photos taken? Find the location. So one way to find us that is to use Google image search or reverse image search. Okay. So images. Okay. This is a festival. Now the parade one is this one. Okay, so we have to find out what's the exact location at which the photo has been taken. Okay, let's go through the first result. Rudolph below deflates during parade. <laughs> okay, watch as this Rudolph parade balloon gets caught on a traffic light which punctures the reindeer's head and deflates it quickly this took place during a holiday parade in richmond virginia okay that's that's one possible answer so virginia let's try with this nope Save the image, post it on Twitter, and upload them to Google. That's what we did actually, but it seems like the location didn't work, so we have to see something else. Okay, go back. Let's go through the second one. Central Park West. Okay. The third one.
yeah, this is the exact image we got. I think this one, this one got the exact answer we're looking for. So on November 23, members of the Thompson Coburn's Chicago office joined the annual BMO Harris Bank Magnificent Mile Lights Festival Parade as both spectators and participants. Chicago attorneys and staff led a 30-foot tall Rudolph, the red-nosed, this guy, we endured alone down Michigan Avenue, followed closely behind by a Chicago trolley full of our attorneys and their families. So yes, the place is Chicago actually, and I think I am sure of that. I would be surprised if the answer is wrong. So it is Chicago, and yes, that's the correct answer. Now, okay, you found the city, but where specifically was one of the photos taken? Specifically means we have to find the coordinates I talked about in the first, our first. Uh, earlier in the video. So you have to find the coordinates, which means that the coordinates can only be found by using some sort of exif uh, tool. So if we go back to the terminal and open the console, so exif tool Let's try it on this one, ENR, ENR. Okay, I think let's copy that. They look both similar. Let's see here. This is the exif data. Let's look for coordinates. No coordinates. Okay. Let's try with this one. Also here, there is no coordinates. If we minimize this, let's check the light festival. <laughs> All right, so here we got a flag, which is the copyright, GPS latitude, GPS longitude, northwest, and we got the information. As you can see, we have GPS latitude and GPS longitude, and if you utilize Google Maps, we will find out the exact location of the city, or of the, or the location where, at which the photo was taken. Okay, so what do we do here? We just, um, let's go back to the questions. So here, okay, you found the city, but where specifically was one of the photos taken? Here goes the coordinates and here goes the flag. <laughs> 41 degrees, 53, let's see how we can decode this. Ah, GPS position. 33, 30, 53, and okay, I think we, we can do that easier if we go to, there's an online tool called Exif, Exif, Jeffrey. This is another online tool for Exif, so check on that. Um, fire hydrant, verify. All right. So here we get the coordinates. And the flag, the flag can also be found here. All 
Okay, next question. Has Rudolph been pawned? What password of his appeared in a breach? So here we have to check if the uh, username or the account has been breached. But in order to find that, we need an email address. Let's look at the hint. Okay, this is the email address. Let's copy that, and here is a tool that we can check to find out if the email address has been pawned before. And this is not a problem, actually. I'm going to show you some tools that you can use to find out. Okay. So here, go to... Um, We got the email. There is another tool called Have I Been Pawned? And there is another tool called Dehashed. Some of these tools uh, show the password, some of them do not show the password. It depends whether they are commercial or free. So, Skyla here. Will Scala will access to Scala continue to be free? Yes. Will I need to register for any access? Nope. Okay. We're happy to announce that in our effort to continue providing free access to the world's largest bridge data set, we have made a number of changes. We are bringing on more resources, including developers, architects, and all that good stuff. It will take a few months, so it is under maintenance. Okay, let's check Dehashed. Search. Okay, I have to log in. Let's check here. So this password is spawned in one data breach and found no pastes. The breach is on live journal. Okay, but how do we find the the, uh, the plain text password? Uh, this will be a bit tricky since Skyla now is under maintenance. Okay, let's try our luck with dehashed. Let's create an account. started okay let's grab the email check sign in all right all right so here we got the same results that the password has been uh, leaked in this website, which is live journal request entry removal. But I want to see the password, so it doesn't show the password. Okay. I, w I was sure actually that the only website which will show the password is Skylab because it's free. Uh, that's why the answer for the second question or the second question will go unanswered, unfortunately. Now, based on all the information gathered, it's likely that Rudolph is in the windy city and is staying in a hotel in Magnificent Mile. What are the street numbers of the hotel address? What are the street numbers of the hotel address? Given that we got the coordinates, if you remember, we can plug in the coordinates in Google Maps and extract the street numbers. So we have to view the uh, coordinates in Google Maps in order to find the answer for this question. Paste in the coordinates. Okay. So let's um, 
maximize or zoom in. So let's find out if there is a hotels nearby this location. Okay, this is one hotel. Chicago Marriott Downtown Magnific. Let's click on that. Could be the thing we're looking for. Chicago Marriott Downtown Magnificent Mile. If you go back to the question, and is staying in a hotel on Magnificent Mile. What are the street numbers? So I have found the hotel he is staying in. Now I have to find the street number. Let's check it out on the location. So street number five four zero. Let's check it out. Five four zero. And that's it, yes. So that was about this challenge. I hope you enjoyed this case and of course see you in the next video.